who took place. April 12th, no, April 11th, that week, begin. The week of April 12th, the tension that was imposed started. They have raised the level of torturing. And so, when we came out of prison, though, then they started to say the president was, we didn't know the president was going someplace, and they said they were going to kill these power people, April 4th. We didn't know all of that. But begin just that beating, that torturing. We, we knew we were dead. We knew we were dead. And then, we went to sleep. April 11, 1980. Around 3 o'clock that morning, somebody spoke sapo from the PHP side. You, you guys know PHP? You been there too? PHP. You know the opposite of the football field, Anthony Totmos Stadium? They call that place the PHP. They're behind the post stacking. Somebody yelled from the PHP side, he sapo that on the back of and there was a lot of noise. So Matthew, Matthew was in room eight. I was in room thirteen, and we shared, we shared, you know, when we want gossip, we night each other place, and you know. I don't think they knew what they were doing. You're putting me to putting me next to Matthew. They were just putting some some bombs, you know, waiting to die. You know, they were just putting them there. So I told Matthew, I said, I heard Sapo the the K President Talbot. May his soul rest in peace. Gabriel first word was call up please. The militia then we do what? I said, okay. But I hear on the other side there people say they can't talk about. And then we heard some, so we decided to plant our ears to the floor to see if we get sound, you know, movement. And then boom. Then somebody yelled that they had killed Charles Reddy who was head of the executive mansion battalion. Boom. Boom. Yeah. Then, Mr. Queer, Chia Chipo, they started their Holy Ghost business. They started praying. Yeah, Lord Chipo caught himself. He said, you shut up. You don't know who finished taking the coup. You're comfortable. You're praying. Shut up. The place went quiet again. And then people started yelling. The days, the dad, all kind of story. But beginning when you impose stockade, you don't know whether it's, and I'm talking about 90 degrees sun, you don't know whether it's 9 o'clock or 6 o'clock in the morning. Days. That terrible the play was. And when you on the if they believe you on the bar side, they put you in interview. Interview, you 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 don't see, you don't recognize anything. Post it. About six o'clock that day, that morning, Larry Botti. A member of the new group, I didn't know his name then. The soldier came yelling, crying, sinking, and they broke into post stockade. They broke into post stockade to get us out of the post stockade. Larry Botte, who was in charge of that group that broke into the post stockade to free us. Because the word at that time was that some people would come to the prison 
and they will spray us. And so, General Wesai sent Larry Botti to the prison to get out of their quake. Just in case there was a counter coup, so we'll not be there. And so that was a preoccupation. The first work that they wanted to do was to get out of the post target. And, and you know, when they put us in post target, they cut your hair. You know, and now they are bald, you know, we have plenty of hair. And they cut your hair this way. They cut your hair this way. They pull rolls into your hair so you be looking like a common criminal. You know. And here were all the... The, the, the guys that you call rolls or, you know, murder were treated better than us. All because we were playing with the privileges of the ruling class. We have violated a cardinal principle in revolutionary justice. Or in the justice of tyranny and dictatorship. The coup took place. April 12th. 1980. They put us in this truck. All over here, our brief, naked, you know, beaten, broken up. And they marched us to Kongba's office. They told us, We are taking you to the commanding general of the new, uh, of the new government. They were specific. They were clear. We, the new government has a commanding general and we are taking you there. Mafia must say a lot of time we'll gossip. Say now, new commander of the general, army general. So they get new government. When we want gossip so that we can walk away from OJ because he quit to give us trouble. So we walk far from him. But he said, in order to caught his attention. So he too wanted to share this fun. Then Chipo came. Joy Sebe Bole was with us. Joy Bole was assistant secretary or assistant minister at the Ministry of Education. Joy Bole was also a member of the tax force of the youth tax force of the True Party. He was among those that were mandated to transform the True Party. George Bole, Emmanuel Shaw, a lot of them. They did this, I think October, November. I for the True Party tax force. Do some homework again. Do some homework again. The Kuto place. Bali was with us. So his, people, his own people arrested him because they were vexed that he... But Bali is a sapo kid. We, on our part, there's another native kid who came with PhD and we saw we made friends with him. Those years, it was about book. Education, 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 education. Bole came home with PhD. We wanted to have the PhD friend. We didn't care whether he true we party man or he graduated from Riggs or the Turbo people that he people. We just didn't care. We made friends with him. Queer tire from Nima, he had a PhD, we made friends with Tyre. Because the boy was good. Harry Nguyen came home with his uh, engineering degree. We were in search, we were excited about all the young native professionals coming home. We didn't care about their politics. We just wanted to make, to be their friend. And in the process of our work, Bole was one of those that we, that we, yeah, the 
coup took place. We stay to, to the battalion, to the commanding general's office, the morning of April 12th. The commandante of Paul Stackett, they call him Kepa, Major Kepa. When Kepa walks, you can pick up a needle. When Kepa calls your name, please forgive me. You 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 piss in your clothes. This is Kepa, man. And calling your name, Kepa. The Kuto place. We're standing upstairs in BDC, in Kongbas office, looking. Everybody was crying, yelling, and we saw. This guy, four soldiers ran into BDC. Upon my order, the first time I saw somebody dying. Kept our feet, could not touch the ground, the guy. By the time they will reach the brigade headquarters, Kepa was shot. And the word was, Kepa was more violent to soldiers than even the political people. So the state we were in, a Kepa a more violent to the soldier more than us, then it was really tough. So the soldier, they had their own beef. They had their own thing with Kepa, the commandante of the post arcade. The cool to place. About nine o'clock, the war came. The president of Liberia wants to see Gabriel Bacchus Matthews, Oscar Jai Queer, and Chia Chipo. These guys were crying, armed to the teeth. The team for Oscar Queer, Chia Chipo, Bacchus Matthews. Gabriel look at me, I look at Gabriel, and we move on the side. What could this mean? Chipo wanted to know what, what, Carla, what you say? What you think? Oscar came and put his hand around us and said, we're going to the mansion. Don't leave this barrier as long as you don't see one of us. If there's a counter coup, we are not going back to post stack it. My assignment was clear. We had almost 600 of us coming out of post stack it, half dead. And we just couldn't think, think, think that we go back to post target. We learned a little rule, little principle. Along these years, that says it's better to die standing than to crawl on your feet. And we decided we would stand up. And that was my assignment to stand up. As a good law will have it, Thomas Wesai, Thomas Kwewongba consolidated the coup. We didn't have to fight on our own behalf.